A new study from Thailand revealed shocking amounts of myocarditis and abnormal ECG findings after COVID vaccination in kids aged 13 through 18. What's worse, this new study adds to the pile a plethora of other studies from places like Hong Kong and Ontario, Canada, showing this myocarditis safety signals being a big issue, which is not getting enough attention from CDC and FDA in the United States. That said, Israel identified this safety signal first, but shortly after that, in mid July, CDC Director Rochelle Walensky wrongfully downplayed its prevalence and importance. Roll the clip. Um, you know, we heard a lot of these data and we've been following this very carefully um, as we have had reports of this rare but mild myocarditis come in. Um, and we heard about this yesterday at the um, Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices yesterday. Um, but what we do when we do this is we look at the risks and we look at the benefits. And to just put this in perspective, if we have a group of 12 to 17 year olds who are uh, working to vaccinate over the next four months and we can vaccinate a million of them, which would be great strides, over the next four months, we could expect 30 to 40 of these mild, self-limited cases of myocarditis. She still continues to downplay the importance of the safety signal. So if you want a quick summary of this study, here it is. A new study from Thailand examined 301 kids, of which 202 were male and 99 were female, aged 13 through 18, given a second dose of Pfizer, who were tested before and after vaccination for one, abnormal ECG, so those are electrocardiograms, two, abnormal troponin levels, which is a cardiac enzyme, which if elevated, indicates possible heart damage, Three, elevated CKMB, that's creatinine kinase myocardial band, another cardiac enzyme, and four, CRP, which is C-reactive protein, that's a, a non-specific inflammatory marker. Well, researchers found after a second dose that myocarditis, myopericarditis, pericarditis, and subclinical myocarditis occurred in 3.49% of kids. Researchers also found that 17.94% of kids in this study experienced abnormal ECGs, electrocardiogram findings, like ST elevations with PR depression, which is an abnormal heart rhythm, basically, sinus tachycardia and bradycardia, which are abnormally fast or slow heart rates, and the list goes on and on. Anyway, stay tuned because the details matter. Before we begin, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell in the bottom right hand corner so you can be notified when my new videos come out. Also, click my social links in the description below if you want more content like this. I post extra exclusive content on Substack and Patreon if you're interested. Also, I have YouTube memberships now that give you access to more content, so just click the join button above. Anyways, let's get into this. First, some background. Myocarditis, or inflammation of the heart muscle after COVID vaccination, was a safety signal recognized first by Israel back in 2021 of July. It occurred in those who received Moderna more than Pfizer, in males more than females, in those aged 16 through 30 compared to other age groups, and more after the second dose than first. Other countries recognized this was a problem and took action, like pausing Moderna for those under 30 and recommending Pfizer instead, also extending the time between the first and second dose. I should say, we have extended the time between the first and second dose in the United States, but we were far behind schedule, and because of that, many children were unnecessarily hurt. Let me pull up my Substack post on this new study so I can explain things better. Hold on one sec. Okay, so I'm going to pull this up and highlight this area right here so I can explain this to you. As you can see, this is a prospective study and the only prospective study examining myocarditis post second dose in kids to date. Basically, a prospective study follows groups of similar people with a specific difference over time, and then looks at the outcomes associated with that specific difference in each group. For example, this study, this Thailand study, looked at mainly boys given a second dose of Pfizer whose cardiac enzymes and ECGs were examined before and after vaccination from November to December 2021. Those are the main similarities. Uh, the main difference was age, right? This study monitored certain age groups, so 13 
16 through 18. Interestingly, there were 99 females in the study that almost served as a control group who experienced no myocarditis, pericarditis, myopericarditis, or subclinical myocarditis. However, seven out of 202 males, which is around 3.49%, experienced some form of myo or pericarditis. Also, 17.94% had abnormal ECG findings, which we will go over in a minute. Now, one second, I'm going to open up this study and I am going to scroll down to page nine so you can see this chart. Look here on the far left, numbers one through seven. These are the cases of myocarditis, pericarditis, myopericarditis, and subclinical myocarditis from left to right. If you look towards the middle, you can see CKMB, which is that creatinine kinase myocardial band we talked about earlier, and troponin. Again, those are cardiac enzymes. If they are elevated, that can indicate heart damage. Now, the numbers one, two, three, four, right here below each of those cardiac enzymes I just mentioned are a measure of those enzymes at a baseline after dose one, not after dose two. Then at day three, seven, and 14 post second dose of Pfizer. You can see here four of the participants didn't have levels checked the day 14 as indicated by those dashes. That said, normal troponin, so you know, is under 0.04. And if you look right here, every single reading was elevated. That indicates potential heart damage. Now, look at the higher bound reading here of 593 for troponin. Now, look at the row here that says classification. So if you notice nearby, everyone is labeled as subclinical myocarditis because the readings are elevated slightly above baseline. It really makes you wonder how many of these cases are not being identified or even brushed off by doctors in emergency departments because the results are subclinical, meaning these kids, they're presenting with mildly elevated troponin, and mild chest pain and palpitations. And because of that, my guess is myocarditis is way underestimated. Anyways, let me scroll up to page 10 and I'll show you another chart in a second. So if you look Look here, these are the abnormal ECG findings. Remember, nearly 18% experienced these. To name some, we see tachycardia, bradycardia, PACs, PVCs, ST elevation with PR depression. All of that is bad news. What does all this mean? Well, clearly CDC, NIH, and Pfizer need to organize and run some randomized control trials for this. Also, we really need to consider more nuance for kids like reduced doses, further extending dosing times, or avoiding mRNA constructs completely. As CDC anyway just recently recognized prior infection or natural immunity is equal to or better than vaccine-induced immunity as reported in their new guidance from three days ago. In their own study, even a month back, the CDC recognized that nearly 80% of kids have prior infection, so they already have natural immunity. So what are we doing here? And just so you know, the level of myocarditis in this study is nearly two orders of magnitude greater than data reported in surveillance systems like VAERS, which means it's likely being underreported overall. Also, as a comparison, around 3% who took the smallpox vaccine experienced myocarditis. Of that 3%, 10% experienced decompensated heart failure and death. That said, the CDC and FDA and mainstream media need to wake up. This isn't something minor and kids can become very injured from this. Now the likelihood of that happening is low overall with mRNA COVID vaccines, but it's substantially higher for kids aged 16 through 30 according to many studies that are out there now. Anyways, those are the facts. If there's anything you'd like to learn about in the future, leave it in the comment section below and I'll see you on the next one.